Hey everyone, welcome to r slash Tales from Tech Support, where we get to have a little chuckle at the technologically disadvantaged. I'm Uncle Reddit, and have I got a story for you. By the way, just wanted to let you know that we've also turned this channel into a podcast for those of you that would rather listen and can't always watch the channel. Just search Storytime with Uncle Reddit on Spotify, Apple Music, Google Podcasts, Anchor FM, and more. Now on to the stories. Roof-mounted display not working? Best power cycle the building. A few years ago, I was working at a site where there was a small bowling alley. As with most places, the alley had a display above every lane for scores, etc. This particular setup used 4X basic 40-inch plus LCD TVs for the job. Being the on-site IT tech, I was used to getting random calls, and one day I was asked to come and work out why one of the TVs wouldn't turn on. The standby LED was glowing red, so it was obviously getting power and testing with the phone camera showed the remote worked. The problem was the TV simply wouldn't respond. Now, basic fault finding would dictate we pull the power from the TV and force it to power cycle. Problem is, said TV was roof mounted, and we didn't have access to a tall enough ladder. Worse, a group was due to use that lane within a few minutes. Suddenly a light bulb goes off in my head. The supply to the TVs will have a circuit breaker on it, so why not switch that? I ask where the distribution board is for that building. I look at all the breakers and to my dismay, none are marked roof mounted TVs or anything similar. With the group's time slot fast approaching, I ask, when there's a power cut, do you have to reset anything on the pin setters? No, came the reply. Well then, there's only one thing for it. And I pulled the big red, turn the whole of this board off switch, waited a bit and then threw it back on. Success, a full bank of working displays. <laughs> Modern problems require modern solutions. Good job, OP. And for our next story. User states I can only open one program at a time in my browser. I work for a large multinational in a call center as level one tech support. At peak times, we have between 20 and 30,000 employees connected to our network. Our users use various applications, many of which run in a browser. Some of the programs require Chrome, some require Internet Explorer. I've been doing this for long enough that I have a pretty good understanding of how everything works, but I've been surprised a few times. Now on to the story. Me. Blah blah, how can I help you? User. I can only open one program at a time in my browser. Me. I already think I know where this is going. What program are you attempting to use and in which browser? User. I'm using X program and Y program. I've tried in Chrome and Internet Explorer. Me. Okay, that's a bit odd. Those should work in both browsers. Let me remote in and see what's happening when you launch them. I establish remote access. Me. Okay, show me what's happening. User launches X program in Internet Explorer and it appears to be working. User then launches Y program in the same tab. Hmm. <laughs> User. Now, when I go back to X program, I'm logged out. I need both to be running at the same time. <laughs> me. Let me show you how tabs work in your browser. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this user didn't know that tabs were a thing. She also didn't know how to open a second browser window. I was truly surprised. I had heard of this kind of thing, but never seen it before. Too long didn't read. Users trying to open two browser-based programs in the same tab. I had to teach her how to open a new tab. Ah, uh, I can't believe anybody younger than probably 90 doesn't know how to open a second tab in any browser. Huh. Interesting. And our next story. User can't work because of missing Outlook notifications. I work for an MSP that services companies of all sizes and even government systems. Our tickets come from help desk and are scheduled on our calendar for us to call the end users back to assist. This happened earlier this week. Me equals me, user equals user. Me, thanks for calling MSP, this is me. I have a ticket here that you are not getting Outlook notifications, is that correct? User. Yes, I haven't been getting any email notifications, and I'm super behind because of it. The notifications are on in Outlook, I checked. Me. Alright, I'll just remote in with you and take over for a minute. I logged into the machine and went to Microsoft Notification Settings. It looks like your notifications were off for Outlook in your Windows settings. User. Are you serious? I've been so behind this week because of this, and you fix it in less than two seconds? Me. Anything else I can help you with? User. No, thank you for your time. Me, head meets desk. And that is what our tax dollars pay for. 
<laughs> Too long didn't read. User gets no work done because Outlook notifications are off in Windows settings. Well, some people are either one track mind or just can't focus enough on anything other than their particular specialty to fix anything outside of that purview. And for our next story, different day, different users. Got off to a rough start in the morning with a lady that would make a Karen cower. 20 minutes of yelling and refusing to accept solutions to her problems. Password expired. Shouldn't have to reset. VDI not allowing you to log in because of authentication failure? Click the link on your phone that will be sent via text to reactivate dual authentication account. No, it will not be on your computer. It is the text I heard arrive on your cell like I explained. Managed to get her off the line with a sigh of relief, and I look at the clock realizing it's only 7.23 and I still have a full shift ahead of me. Q phone ringing. Hi, me with IT help desk. What can I do for you? User. Hi, I've got a couple problems. I sigh and resign myself to the idea of dealing with another hair pulling 20 minutes in hell. But this user was different, a breath of fresh air. He cracked jokes and we were able to work together and had his password fixed and I was able to explain the process of how he could have a request put in for his Microsoft Office account, all within five minutes. And at the end of the call, he hit me with, Hey man, you're great. Don't let whatever those IT guys say about you make you think any different. Thanks for the help. Me. I laugh and respond. It tends to be the users that have the choice words for us, so it means a lot that you took the time to say that. Really appreciated. And we parted ways with both parties happy at the service provided. Why can't all users be like this? We're just people doing our jobs. I love when users understand that and work with rather than against you on a problem. My mom used to have this saying, people suck, and it's not too far from the truth. I mean, I hate to be pessimistic and cynical, but yeah, a lot of people do suck. So, eh, you kind of get used to it after a while. And our next story. A real network engineer. This took place many years ago. T1 was the WAN most common. In fact, T1 to the internet was something to brag about. I was working at a small VAR in a medium-sized city that focused on the SMB marketplace. We supported a medium-sized manufacturing company that had satellite offices spread around the neighboring states. The big telco sales department had sold them a managed WAN solution that only included T1 connections to the remote offices, but a backup connection 128k ISDN, if I remember. This was an enjoyable implementation, as I remember. Cue the day when Big Telco changed out the router at a satellite office for reasons, and the circuits came up on the backup connection only. Many unhappy users at the remote site was the result. Yes, slow was better than nothing, but slow is supposed to be temporary. The IT contact opened the ticket with Big Telco, but they said there was no problem. Next thing I know, I'm on a conference call with the big telco tech and the IT contact. Our position. After the router was changed, it came up on the backup line. This is a managed service. It is not working as designed. We have unhappy users. Fix it. Their position. The routers were identical, down to the configuration file, so there was nothing they could do. As you might expect, being outnumbered on the call 2 to 1, with facts on our side, the conversation went fairly pear-shaped for the unfortunate tech. He got so frustrated that he uttered a memorable line. If you would just hire a real network engineer, you wouldn't have these problems. Not knowing immediately how to respond to this highly unprofessional and slightly hurtful comment, I retreated into silence. The customer IT contact, bless her, immediately picked up the conversation. She didn't believe their storyline either. Shortly after, I opened a sidebar conversation with the company IT contact over email where I requested configuration files from the not working router and one from another site that was working correctly. Surprisingly, within a couple of minutes, I had both files. Using an age-old technique of stare and compare, I quickly found the line of configuration present in the functioning router and missing from the misbehaving router. Time has erased the specific command, but it was one of the special purpose commands in the Cisco IOS used for cases like this with standby connections. I rejoined the conversation with the observation of the line present in the working router and missing from the misbehaving one, and a suggestion that we add the line and see what happens. He did. It worked. The T1 started to be the primary connection. All was well with the world, or at least for the users at that location. 
I then got to deliver the memorable and satisfying line, yes, they did hire a real network engineer. To his credit, the big telco tech immediately started profusely apologizing and offering virtual coffee to me. Not interested in virtual coffee, whatever that was. Solving a customer's problem was highly satisfying. You know, I've been in carpentry and around construction most of my life, and uh, I was doing some custom carpentry work in a house and had a guy hang in cabinet boxes, and I'm talking regular, generic, big box store cabinets, who evidently that's all he's ever done in his life besides, you know, push a broom, telling me how to do custom carpentry work. Yeah, there's a big difference between figuring out custom trim, molding, building custom cabinets, and just slinging boxes on the wall and putting a few screws in. I understand how you feel, man. There's one in every office, and even if you leave IT, you can never escape them. I started a new job in January that's not IT. Yay. I'm finally free after 10 years in IT. Nope. As I'm the most IT knowledgeable around the virtual office, I'm the guy everyone goes to with issues. Not so bad. Office is full of young go-getters who grew up with the internet. Their Google foo is spot on, except one. There's always going to be one person in every office who's massively incompetent with computers. I have many stories with this person. Here's one that literally just happened. Some part of a regular function we do every day isn't working properly. Manager sends an email telling everyone it's not working. Here's the way around it for now until it's working again. They'll inform us when it's fixed. Two minutes later, I get a call from her, saying it's not working. I ask if she followed manager's new instructions. She says, yeah, and it's not working. I remote to her machine, ask her to show me where it's failing. She proceeds to do things the normal, currently broken way. Facepalm. Okay, did you see manager's email? He said it's broken. Well, why is it broken? Don't worry about that. Just do it this new way for now. I proceed to walk her through it because the email confuses her. I'm about to hang up and she drops the line. So this is the way we're supposed to do it now? Yes, but only until he says it's fixed. Until what's fixed? The old way of doing things. So I can do it the old way now? <laughs> no, not until it's fixed. When will it be fixed? Actually, he just sent an email saying it's working fine now. Just a small glitch. You can go back to the old way. Then why do we do it this new way? Because I just... Because it was broken. I... WTF. So it's fixed now? Which way am I doing it? <laughs> yes, it's fixed. You can go back to the old way. So what about this new way? Okay, let's just forget all about this new way. Don't worry about anything. It's all fixed now. Delete his email. Forget we even had this conversation. Just keep doing it the old way. The proper way. Why does manager try to confuse us like this? Oh my effing god. Some people are just amazing. They can't... She couldn't follow the email. She couldn't follow the conversation. Uh, what are you going to do? Actually... There's a comment from a reader down below that sums it up best. Albert Einstein observed that the difference between genius and stupidity is that there are limits to genius. <laughs> Some people push my patience to the absolute limit of what I'm capable of. I feel you. Yep, some people just can't be helped. Well, thanks for joining me, guys. If you enjoy this content, please do me a favor and click like, subscribe to the channel, and maybe click that little bell icon so you don't miss the fat guy with the beard telling you stories. Oh, yeah. And if you're looking for any Uncle Reddit merch, and let's face it, who's not looking for Uncle Reddit merch? Go on down to the description box and click the link. You can go in there and get a t-shirt, a hoodie sweatshirt, a coffee mug. See ya.